Today, I will provide you with an overview of Amazon Detective and walk through a brief demonstration of how to utilize Amazon Detective for security investigations in the console. Amazon Detective simplifies the investigative process and helps security teams conduct faster and more effective investigations. Amazon Detective makes it easy to analyze, investigate, and quickly identify the root cause of potential security issues and suspicious activities. So overall, Detective helps customers answer questions like, how did this security incident happen? What AWS resources were affected? And how can we prevent this from happening again? Once enabled, Amazon Detective automatically extracts time-based events such as login attempts, API calls, and network traffic from AWS CloudTrail, Amazon VPC flow logs, Amazon EKS audit logs, Amazon Guard Duty findings, and AWS Security Hub findings from Amazon Security Services. From these events, Detective uses machine learning and visualization to create a unified interactive view of your resource behaviors and the interactions between them over time. Detective Taylor visualizations provide baselines for accounts and summarize security information to assess root cause analysis. Amazon Detective can analyze trillions of events from separate data sources containing IP traffic AWS managed operations and malicious or unauthorized activity to construct a graph model that distills information to a single finding group. Finding groups allow you to view security related relationships and summaries that enable you to quickly validate, compare, and correlate the data for quick analysis. Amazon Detective Finding Groups contains a dynamic visual representation of the behavior graph of Detective to emphasize the relationships between security findings and the associated entities within a finding group. This feature makes it easier for you to triage potential security issues with at-a-glance visuals that include finding types, severity levels, associated accounts, and linkages with the detective behavioral graph that can be used to investigate related activity within a finding group. Now that we've gone through the overview of Amazon Detective, let's switch to the console for a demonstration. With just a few clicks in the AWS Management Console, you can enable Amazon Detective, and there's no software to deploy, agents to install, or complex configurations to maintain. So simply select Get Started. To enable Amazon Detective with the administrator account that you are currently logged into, you'll need to attach an Amazon Detective Full Access Managed Policy so you can administer Detective for your organization. In order to do so, select Attach Policy from IAM. You'll be redirected to the IAM console. Here you can see the permissions for this policy. And now to attach the policy to the admin, you'll go to Policy Usage, Attach, Select Admin, Attach Policy, and that is complete. Next, we can go back into the console for Detective, and you'll need to type in the account number for your delegated administrator. So once Amazon Detective is enabled, you'll log out and then log back in with your delegated administrator account. And so this account is what's going to help to manage Amazon Detective and permissions for your organization. So once you've selected the delegated administrator account, you'll simply select Delegate. Also, prior to delegating an administrator, you will need to make sure that Amazon Guard Duty has been enabled. So if you select delegate on a delegated administrator account that does not have Amazon Guard Duty enabled, you will need to enable that with that account prior to delegating your delegated administrator. Once you have attached the Amazon Detective Full Access Policy to the respective principles and decided whether or not you'll be using an administrator, You'll then select the down arrow for Enable Detective for this account. And this is just another reminder of the required permissions for your administrator accounts. If you've already done so, you won't need to attach other principles. But as a reminder, you can do that again here. Then we can select Enable Amazon Detective. When you enable Amazon Detective, Detective creates a region-specific behavior graph that has your account as its administrator account. This is initially the only account in the behavior graph, and the administrator account can then invite other AWS accounts to contribute their data to the behavior graph. And this is the example that we're using for enablement because we did not select a delegated administrator. We only have the administrator account. So from here, you have two options to add additional member accounts, 
And that's going to either be with any organizations, which will require you to create a delegated administrator or by invitation. And what the way you'll handle that is by selecting actions and then invite accounts. And you'll simply either enter manually each individual account with account ID and email address, or you can enter a CSV file as well. If you decide to select a delegate administrator for your organization, that delegate administrator will have the ability to add any organization account as a member of your behavior graph. You also have the ability to auto-enable organization accounts. So when this toggle is on, as soon as any account is added as a member to your organization, it'll automatically be added to your behavior graph in Amazon Detective, and you'll be able to gain correlative information related to that account. Here we are on the summary page of the Amazon Detective Console. This summary page allows you to identify entities to investigate the origin of activity during the previous 24 hours. The Detective Summary page helps you to identify entities that are associated with specific types of unusual activity. So as we go from top to bottom, first we have the scope, scope time. This scope time is within a 24 hour time range and it can be adjusted by simply selecting the scope time. And since Amazon Detective retains up to a year of historical data, you can go back up to a year from the current date. Next on the summary page, we're going to check out viewing all finding groups. So finding groups lists all of the finding groups identified from your behavior graph. And they're sorted by severity, meaning groups that contain the highest severity findings are at the top of the list. Next, you're going to have this title, and the title is based on the AWS Security Hub AWS Security Finding Format, also known as ASFF, and then you have Observed Tactics. So all of these tactics are based on the MITRE ATT&CK framework. You can also have entities, so these are going to be all of the entities such as AWS accounts, uh, VPC, subnet IDs that are associated with the finding groups and specific findings. Then you have Last Seen as well as the status. When you select the title for the finding group, you're going to have a unique finding group ID. But here below, we have the observed tactics. So these observed tactics, again, are based on the MITRE ATT&CK framework, and you're able to see the progression of this attack, and you're able to see which tactics the finding is associated with. So here, this finding group, we're seeing that they're in the discovery and command and control tactics are being observed. And when you select, it can also provide you information on like, so what is command and control? And that's when an adversary is trying to communicate with compromised systems to control them. Now, if we scroll down to the visualization section, we're going to be able to see a dynamic visualization. And this is going to allow you to select and see details about each item in a finding group. First, you have the ability to adjust the layout. So you have a force directed, circle, and grid. And so let's switch back to force directed for the sake of the demonstration. Next, you're going to be able to turn the labels on and off. And so these are going to be the titles for entities and findings. Down below, you also have a legend and each of them are going to list the icon for each finding. You also have the ability to have icons that will condense similar findings together from one account. Now going back to the entities and findings, you also have the ability to move each entity or finding, as you please, to kind of assort them in a way that makes sense for you logically during your investigation. So we have this subnet and we can see that it's associated with multiple guard duty findings. You have port scan, DNS data exfiltration, command and control, and then here, this Bitcoin 2 finding. So as you mentioned that some icons are condensed when you have similar findings from one account. And so we can see was noted multiple times. Now, when we scroll down, you also have the ability to see um, the entities. So these entities are correlated to the same underlying activity. And so it easily allows you to pivot from the entity profile based on here. So you have a list of all your entities. So you have VPC, subnets, um, as well as IP addresses. Then when we go over to involve findings, you can see findings associated with this finding group. So you have data exfiltration, Bitcoin, command and control, um, and then it's also listing the entities associated with that finding. 
So back on the summary page, as we begin to scroll down, the next panel we have roles and users with the most API call volume. So this lists all the users and the roles with the largest volume API calls during the previous 24 hours. So you're given the principal, which is either a role or a user, you have the AWS account numbers, and then you're going to visually see the trends from the past seven days. And you can see the red line is gonna denote any failed calls, and the green line denotes any successful calls. And you have the counts for successful and failed API calls and the total for each principle. In the next panel, we have the EC2 instances with the most traffic volume. So you have the list of EC2 instances. Again, you have a visual representation of the past seven days and their trend. You have the amounts of bytes in, bytes out, and the total bytes for each EC2 instance. Third, you have container clusters with the most pods created. So you have the list of each container cluster, the account associated with that cluster, and the number of pods for that specific cluster, as well as findings related to that container cluster. Last, we have newly observed geolocations. So this lists the geolocations from which API calls originated during the previous 24 hours, but from which calls did not originate during the baseline time period. So the baseline time period is going to be 45 days before the previous 24 hours. And this list contain up to 100 geolocations. So you can easily visually see where API calls are coming from, and then if you scroll down, you'll have the locations listed below, as well as the successful and failed API calls. Now we're going to check out the search function for Amazon Detective. This function allows you to search for a finding or entity, and from the results, you can easily navigate to an entity profile or a finding overview. And if your search results return more than 10,000 results, you're only gonna be able to see the top 10,000 results. So the way this works is that first you'll select the type, and you have various types to choose from. So you have AWS account, AWS role, container cluster. Um, before this demo, let's check out IP address. So say you're wanting to look for a specific IP address, but you're unsure of the entire CIDR or dot notation. You have the ability to utilize wildcards. So you could type one dot zero dot, and let's say the rest is kind of like, you're unsure. So we can use wildcards. And when we say search, Amazon Detective is still going to be able to give you IP addresses utilizing the wildcards that fit the string that you entered for search. Next, let's say we want to find any accounts associated with specific role, but we don't quite know the AWS account numbers. So we could select AWS role, type in admin, and here we're going to see a list of accounts that have the admin role. So now from these results, let's take a look at what a typical entity profile in Amazon Detective would look like. So from these search results, we could either pivot and look based on the principal ID or the Adibus account. Let's look into the Adibus account. So first we see here at the top, for each entity profile, you're going to be given um, a unique identifier for that specific entity profile. And here we have the Adibus account and that is listed as well as any tag. So this is prod. And then as we scroll down, you do have the scope time. So if you want to adjust the time within that you're looking at data, so this is going to give you any activity that occurred within this 24 hour period and sometime a bit before this scope time. Now under findings associated with resource, you're given the title, the product, and this is Security Hub. And just Security Hub is kind of our cloud posture management tool. And so you're going to be able to have a lot of findings sent through Security Hub because a lot of security services are able to send those findings over and have them aggregated in a central location. You have the list of the AWS account, the finding type, when it was first observed, last observed, and also the finding severity. So the severity is helpful when you're going through these findings and you wanna say, well, where do I start first? One place you can look is based on severity. So here we have a high severity finding. So that might indicate that this might be a finding that you may want to prioritize. Also, some of the questions that you may want to ask while you're looking at this panel is, are any of these findings related to the finding that you're investigating? Do any of these findings signify a potentially greater threat or activity, or is this part of any other finding group? 
Next, we have overall API call volume. So this panel displays the number of successful and failed API calls that's made by the resource during each time interval. So as we can see, you can visually see um, the API calls, so how much of the calls were successful versus how many calls were failed. As you scroll down, you will see details for this panel. And so this is going to list observed API addresses um, as well as their API call volume, API methods by service, and also resources and how they've made successful calls. So when you're looking at this panel, some questions that you could ask is, does the API use appear consistent or does the success rate drop notably in any visible time? And last, we have container clusters. So these are just going to list the following container clusters that are in this specific account. And now we have navigated to the uses section. So this is found underneath settings within the left-hand navigation panel. The uses page allows you to see the Amazon detective activity. And the uses page shows the amount of data ingested and the projected cost. So for administrative accounts, such as the one we are currently logged into, the uses page shows the data volume and the projected cost across the entire behavior paragraph, meaning that it does include your member accounts. But for member accounts, the usage page is only going to show the data volume and projected cost for their account across the behaviors graph that they contribute to. You're also going to see the projected cost for the current account that you're logged into, as well as all accounts projected. And below you have a list of the pricing. So it's just reminding you what you're paying for each ingested log per gigabyte. Now to keep you updated with Amazon Detective, you can check out the What's New section from the navigation panel. This is going to provide you with recent updates and launches related to Amazon Detective. The Getting Started panel is going to provide you some tips on adding member accounts, what to do after members are enabled, as well as how to start investigating your findings. And this can be from the Detective Summary page, from the Detective Search page, from Guard Duty, as well as Security Hub. Last, you have video tutorials. So if you want to get hands-on and dive deeper into the Amazon Detective Service, here you're going to find great visual tutorials on how to do just that. In this video, we went through an overview of Amazon Detective and how it simplifies the investigative process and helps security teams conduct faster and more effective investigations. And through the brief demonstration, we taught you some tips on how to utilize Amazon Detective for security investigations within the console. If you'd like to learn more, please visit www.adwest.com forward slash detective.